وأقول في القرآن ما جاءت به آياته فهو الكريم المنزل وأقول قال الله جل جلاله والمصطفى الهادي ولا أتأول الحمد لله رب العالمين له الحمد الحسن والثناء الجميل وأشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له وأشهد أن سيدنا ونبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وأصحابه والتابعين لهم بإحسان إلى يوم الدين أما بعد إن شاء الله تعالى I want us to carry on from where we left off uh, in our last previous episode we were talking about the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's manners and his etiquettes and how he Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam were called to good conduct, good etiquettes, good manners through speech and action Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and we quoted the statement of Ibn Kathir what he said regarding the ayah وَإِنَّكَ لَعَلَىٰ خُلُقٍ عَظِيمٍ the Messenger Sallallahu manners and his etiquettes, it was taken directly from the Qur'an. His speech Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam is mutabiqun lil Qur'ani tafseelan lahu wa tabiyina. The speech of the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, that which he said, that which he spoke Alayhi Salatu Wasallam is in line with the Qur'an. He is explaining the Qur'an. He Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his mission was to show us how to implement this Qur'an, how to uplift ourselves in living by the Qur'an Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam وَلِذَلِكَ Because of that, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had the completest Iman and because of that, the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had the best manners and the best etiquettes Alayhi Salatu Wasallam Abi Umamat al-Bahili radiyallahu ta'ala anhu Abi Umamata al-Bahili radiyallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, Qala qala Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ana za'imun bi baytin fi rabad al-jannah, liman taraka al-mira'a wa in kana muhiqa. Wa bi baytin fi wasat al-jannah, liman taraka al-kadiba wa in kana ma ziha. Wa bi baytin fi a'la al-jannah, liman hassana khuluqahu. Rawahu Abu Dawood. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, I promise, the word za'im means to reassure. Yani, ana da'minun, ana kafilun. I am promising, I'm reassuring any individual who leaves off arguing and debating, I reassure them, I promise them, bi baytin fi rabad jannah a house that surrounds Jannah. He leaves off argumentation and debate. Wa in kana muhiqqan, even if he knows it's his rights. And he's the right one. He is being wronged here. He leaves off the, the debate. He walks away from it. That person, the Prophet said, I promise that person that they will receive what? They will receive bi baytin fi rabadil jannah. A house that surrounds jannah. The messenger that said, وَبِبَيْتٍ فِي وَسَطِ الْجَنَّةِ And a house in the middle of Jannah. To who lakin? لِمَنْ تَرَكَ الْكَذِبَ وَإِنْ كَانَ مَا زِحَى The one who leaves off lying even if he's joking. And he's joking, he's not serious about it. So he lies, he exaggerates, he says things. That person, if he leaves off that off, the Prophet said, I promise you, you're going to get a Jannah or a house in Jannah in the middle of Jannah. And a uh, house in the highest level of Jannah. The one who perfects his manners. Ponder here. This hadith shows us the virtue of good manners. It shows us that good manners will reach you to what? إلى درجات العالية High levels In Jannah The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam He categorized the people into ثلاثة أصناف In three categories, three types The first one is من يكون في ربط الجنة من يكون في ربط في الجنة 
the person who's going to be in the surroundings of Jannah. And that's the lowest level. And the second one is man yakunu fi wasatiha, a person who's going to be in the middle of Jannah, which is a higher level. Wa man yakunu fi a'laha, and the third one is the one who's going to be in the highest level of Jannah. This person is going to be in the what? The highest level. That's the three types of people. Jannah has levels, brothers and sisters. Allah Taala told us in the Quran, "Walikulin darajatu min ma'amilu." Every single individual is going to be given the level they worked for. So Jannah has darajat, and Jahannam has what? Darakat. The Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam is saying that the person who comes with good manners is going to have the highest level in Jannah. That's what the Messenger clarified for us here. And the man يحسن خلقه that the one who perfects his manners يكون له بيت في أعلى الجنة that that person is going to receive is going to be given a high level in Jannah. And the Messenger here is saying عليه الصلاة والسلام أنا زعيم I am the one أنا ضامن أنا كفيل I am the one who's reassuring you I am the one who's promising you I am the one who's guaranteeing you I mean this is it's Nabi Allah Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam. Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah, he said, explaining this hadith, he said, فَجَعَلَ الْبَيْتَ الْعُلْوِيَّ جَزَاءً لِأَعْلَى الْمَقَامَاتِ الثَّلَاثَةِ That Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, or the messenger in this hadith, that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wasalam in this hadith, he has made the highest level, the highest position of residency in Jannah for who? He a husnul khuluq. He made it for good manners and the one who has good etiquettes and good akhlaq. And he made the middle one for who? The one who leaves off lying even if he's joking. And he put the lowest level for who? The one who argue who leaves off arguing even if he's rightful. Then Ibn al-Qayyim says, وَإِنْ كَانَ مَعُ حَقٌّ وَلَا رَيْبَ أَنَّ حُسْنَ الْخُلُقِ مُشْتَمِلٌ عَذَا عَلَى هَذَا كُلِّهِ All three of those that the Messenger mentioned, it, good manners encompasses it. Leaving off uh, debates and argumentation is a form of good manners. Even if it's your rightful, just to leave it off, it's good manners. Also, not lying even if you're joking is good manners. So the hadith has truly spoken about all good manners. Abi Dharr radiallahu ta'ala anhu, he said, qala qala li rasulullah. Abi Dharr al-Ghifari radiallahu ta'ala anhu, a noble companion. He said that the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said to me, ittaqillaha, be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Haythuma kunta wherever you are. وَأَتْبِعِ السَّيِّئَةَ الْحَسَنَةَ تَمْحُهَا And follow the wrong that you do with good. It will wipe it away. وَخَالِقِ النَّاسَ بِخُلُقٍ حَسَنٍ And deal with the people in good manners. And Imam Al-Tirmidhi narrated this hadith. This hadith has three sentences. It has three parts in it. This hadith consists of مِنْ جُمَنٍ ثَلَاثٍ this hadith consists of three sentences, three important messages. And this is Jawami' al kalim the comprehensive speech that Allah gave to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The Messenger mentioned in this hadith, Usulul Mu'amala, the foundation of how to deal with people. The foundation. This hadith mentions it, the foundation of dealing. The first one is dealing with Allah. The second is dealing with yourself. And the third one is dealing with the creation. Let's break the hadith down. Let's go through each one, inshallah ta'ala. The first foundation of interaction is what? Ittaqillaha haythu ma kunt. Be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Fear him. Do what he commanded you to do. Stay away from that which he told you to stay away from. Taqwa is something very high. Allah says in the Quran, وَلَقَدْ وَصَّيْنَا الَّذِينَ أُوتُوا الْكِتَابَ مِنْ قَبْلِكُمْ وَإِيَّاكُمْ أَنِ اتَّقُوا الله. Muhammad, we instructed you and the ones who have been given the scripture before you 
to what? Ani taqullah. It, to be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Quran mentions the concept of taqwa immensely, expands on it. There are many verses in the Quran that speak about ala makanati taqwa wa azim sha'niha. The station and the position and the importance of having taqwa. Taqwa is the strongest, the strongest relationship that a person can have with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's why the Prophet chose that one. To say, kunta, be conscious of Allah wherever you are. Al mu'amalatu ma Allah. The relationship that you need to have with Allah. That's the first part that the hadith has. The second asal that is present in this hadith is al If a mistake occurs from you, you do a sin, whether it's minor or major. Follow it up with good. Follow that sin, that shortcoming that you did with good. It will eradicate it. It will get rid of it. This second foundation is talking about your relationship with yourself. The way that you need to deal with yourself. Rectify yourself. Correct yourself. Nurture yourself. Cultivate yourself into that which is good. Yani push your discipline yourself. Grab yourself to the and push yourself to the right direction by being what a person who goes to the hasanat and the ta'at goes to the good and the obedience of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The sins are two types. There are sins that are major, they don't, they do not uh, accept from you just mere righteous actions. If you do a major sin, mere righteous actions cannot eradicate it. You need to also do repentance. You need to ask Allah for forgiveness. And if it's also the creation, you are, need to ask Allah for forgiveness first and then the creation as well. But if it's a minor sin, then a minor sin, as the evidences have shown, is that you can eradicate a minor sin with righteous actions that you do. If it's a minor sin, the good deeds that you do, al umratu ila al umrati kafaratu lima baynahun. Umrah to Umrah, um, al wudu that you do eradicates it, gets rid of it, wipes it off. Inna al hasarat yudhibn al sayyat that the good deeds that you do gets rid of the wrongs that you've done. This is a minor sins, and it came down on a man who kissed a woman at the time of the Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he said, "Oh Messenger of Allah, I did this." The Messenger sallallahu alaihi wasallam said to the man, "Did you just pray with us?" He said, "Yes, I did." The Messenger alayhi salatu wasalam, said to the man, then your, your shortcoming and your mistake that you did has been eradicated for you. So what we have to understand is that when we do wrong, we follow it up with good deeds. This is our interaction with ourselves. Every day in this world that we're living in, we're, we're working on ourselves. We're in a consistent battle with ourselves. That's important. Islam teaches you this. The third one is nasa hasan. Deal with the people in good manners. The third foundation is what? nasa hasan. Deal with the people in good manners. Good manners is an interaction that you need to have with others. This is the third foundation. It is a third type of interaction. Is mu'amala interaction with the people. The way you are towards them, um, what you say to them, what you do to them. How do you learn what to say to people, what to do? We look at the Prophet's guidance. We look at the Prophet's biography, والسلام, We look at the Prophet's sunnah, salawatullahi wa salamu And that teaches us it. Because the Messenger, sallallahu alayhi wa manners and his adab is the most completest. His khuluq, his etiquettes. Is akmalul khuluq is the best of etiquettes. Fi kulli abwab in all things. And the person is requested, is required from the person to deal with the people, all of them. Bihusnul khuluqin is required from him. Whether that be your parents, whether it be your family and your relatives, whether it be your children, whether it be your family members, whether it be your neighbors, whether it be the general mass, rather even with what? 
even the disbelievers. بل ومع الكفار even with the disbelievers. ولذلك الله سبحانه وتعالى he said لا ينهاكم الله عن الذين لم يقاتلوكم في الدين ولم يخرجوكم من دياركم أن تبروهم وتقصطوا إليهم إن الله يحب المقصطين الآية Allah says in this ayah that Allah tabarak wa ta'ala does not prohibit you from and does not stop you from dealing with good with the non-Muslims the ones who are not fighting you the ones that are not in direct war with you Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala he says that you deal with them in good that you are kind to them that you are gentle to them in Allah yuhibbul muqsitin Allah loves those who are upright the Prophet sallallahu dealt with the kuffar in a very good way والسلام, and that was the reason for their guidance and that was the reason for them to enter the religion of Islam a man may come to the messenger والسلام, and he hates the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam excessively and he comes to the Prophet uh, and he hates the messenger excessively وَلَيْسَ عَلَى وَجْهِ الْأَرْضِ أَبْغَضَ إِلَيْهِ مِنْهُ This man hates the messengers to the, to the core. فَمَا أَنْ يَرَى خُلُوقَهُ الْكَرِيمُ That man, as soon as he sees the messenger, صلى الله عليه وسلم, his manners and his etiquettes. فَمَا أَنْ رَأَى خُلُوقَهُ الرَّفِيعُ وَأَدَبُهُ الرَّفِيعُ Is as quick as he sees the Prophet's manners, his generosity, his kindness, إِلَّا وَيَتَحَوَّلُ مِنْ سَاعَتِهِ Except that he changes. And then from being the man that he hated the most, he becomes the man that he loves the most. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And that is what the ayah means. فَبِمَا رَحْمَةٍ مِّنَ اللَّهِ لِنْتَ لَهُمْ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ لَمْ فَضُّ مِنْ حَوْلِكِ Because of Allah's mercy, Muhammad, لِنْتَ لَهُمْ You are gentle to them. That you are soft to them. وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ وَلَوْ كُنْتَ فَضًّا غَلِيظَ الْقَلْبِ If you were a person who's harsh, hard-hearted, they will scatter and run away from your surroundings. Brothers and sisters, the akhlaq in Islam stands on four pillars. I want you today, inshallah ta'ala, to study this, to learn this, because this is what's going to help you, inshallah ta'ala. The manners in Islam, it stands on four pillars. Any individual who gives it importance, inshallah, with the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he would be from the min ahli, ahli al-akhlaq. You would be from the people of akhlaq. If you come with these four pillars, with the permission of Allah, you are going to be from the people of good manners. وَمَنْ ضَيَّعَهَا And anyone who forsakes these four pillars, أَوْ ضَيَّعَ مِنْهَا شَيْئًا Or if you forsake some of it, ضَعَ مِنْهُ الْخُلُقِ You're going to miss out some good manners. And it will show on you. Again, these, this series, I keep repeating it, and I will throughout the episodes that I do, I'm inshallah ta'ala speaking to myself. So I don't want you to all think that this is something, alhamdulillah, I've achieved it. So I'm here sharing it with you. It's something that I want all of us brothers and sisters, that I want all of us to work on inshallah together. All of us, that we work on that, we perfect it. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bi mannihi wa karamihi. With Allah's kindness and generosity, may Allah give us these good manners and these good qualities so that we become better Muslims that we influence others in a profound way, we change them. May Allah make us from them. So these four pillars, when you, when you lack as a person, you will see that you're not affecting people, you're not, uh, you're causing confusion, and harm to the community. You start seeing that when these four pillars are missing from you. Your akhlaq is not good. People don't want to be around you. They can't, even if they uh, had to, because of what type of quality you have. Hafid ibn Rajab, he mentioned those four pillars. He mentions it in his kitab, Jami Ulum al Hikam. He says, An Abi Muhammad ibn Abi Zayd al Qayrawani. We all know Abi Muhammad Zayd, um, Abi, ibn Abi Zayd al Qayrawani, right? He's the author of the kitab, Risalat ibn Abi Zayd al Qayrawani, the Aqidah book. رحمه الله تعالى. He's an Imam from the أئمة المالكية. So he's an Imam المالكية. He was the Imam of the Maliki Madhab of his time. ولذلك they used to call him 
the, the baby Malik, the baby Imam Malik. That's how good he was in the Maliki Madhab. Rahimahullah ta'ala. He has an Aqeedah book that he writ that shows his Aqeedah was Aqeedah to Ahl Sunnati wal Jama'ah. Rahimahullah ta'ala. Ibn Abi Zayd al Qirawani. He said, so Ibn Rajab al Hambali, he transmitted from Abi Muhammad ibn Abi Zayd al Qirawani, Imam al Malikiya tafi zamani. He was the Imam of the Maliki of his time. That he said, this is the statement of who? Ibn Abi Zayd al Qirawani. That he said, Jima'u adab al khayr, the, the conclusion of good manners. Wa azimatahu and the rope, the front rope for good manners. Tatafarra'u min arba'at hadith. It comes from four hadiths. If you want all good, if you want to grab the, you know the horse, the rope that's in the mouth, if you grab that, what do you do? You can control the horse, right? What direction it goes. If you want to be controlling everything in your life as a person, if you want to be someone in control of himself, yani the way you are, and influence those around you, if you want to be like the Messenger والسلام, in all that good that he came with, Salawatullahi wasalam, it comes from four hadiths. These four hadiths is what are the four pillars of good manners. The first one is, Man kana yu'minu billahi wal yawm al-akhir. If you believe in Allah at the day of judgment, say good or be silent. The second hadith that Ibn Abi Zayd al-Qirawani mentioned is what? من حسن الإسلام المرء تركه ما لا يعني. From a person's excellence in Islam, and to show that you are a true Muslim and up, up and high in your Islam, is that you leave off that which does not concern you. You leave off. That which does not concern you. The, the third one is the hadith of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he advised a man, لا تغضب, don't get angry. The man that came to the Prophet and he said to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, أوصيني, advise me, O Messenger of Allah. The Prophet said, لا تغضب. The man said, أوصيني. The Prophet said, لا تغضب. The man said, أوصيني. The Prophet said, لا تغضب. فدد, فردد مرارا. The Prophet repeated. Every time he said, okay, repeat, uh, advise me, لا تغضب. He asked again, La Taqbab. He asked again, La Taqbab. Three times. Some of the narrations mentioned, Faraddada Miran, and the Prophet repeated La Taqbab so many times. The fourth one was what? Al Mu'minu. Yuhibbu li akhihi ma yuhibbu li nafsi. That the Mu'min loves for his brother that which he loves for himself. These four hadiths that I just mentioned, four of those hadiths are found in the 40 hadiths of Imam al Nawi. And Imam al-Nawi mentioned all four of them. Rahimahullah ta'ala. And that's why Ibn Rajab was mentioning it in his Kitab Jam Ulum al-Hikam. Because the Kitab Jam Ulum al-Hikam is an explanation for what? It's an explanation for the 42 hadiths that Imam al-Nawi brought. He added extra eight, made it 50, and explained all of those 50. Let's go through all of those four, inshallah ta'ala. We're going to go through the Arkanul Akhlaq. The Arkanul Arba'a, the four pillars of Akhlaq. We're going to go through it, inshallah ta'ala. Ar-Rukun al-Awwal. The first one was what? Siyanatu al-Lisan. Perfect, perfect your tongue. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said in the hadith, Man kana yu'minu billah wal yawm al-akhiri fal yaqul khayran aw liyasmut. If you believe in Allah and the day of judgment, say that which is good or be silent. The first sign of a good-mannered individual is that his tongue is protected. Wa man lam yusin lisanahu. The person who doesn't perfect, perfect his tongue, does not control his tongue, you're never going to be from the people of good manners. Because the foundation of good manners and the pillars of good manners and the infrastructure of good manners is what? Siyanatul lisan. To protect your tongue. What does it mean, Siyanatul lisan? To protect your tongue. What does it actually mean? It means, kalam is you imprison your tongue. These teeth are the bars in prison. If a person is put behind behind uh, the bars what is he can't go out right these teeth have been placed in front of the the tongue as the early self used to say so that the tongue can be in prison so you keep it in that in that prison you only let it out when there's a need for it when is the need that you should let it out only when he wants to say something good only that when he wants to say something beneficial everything that a person needs to say is divided into three in in your life 
the things that you want to say are three types. Something that you're clearly sure, number one, something you're clearly sure that there is good in it. It's clear there's good in it. That it's clear to this person that this is something good to say. Don't shy away from it. Say it's the truth. It's khair, inshallah ta'ala. The second is, It's clear that this is pure evil. It's backbiting. It's lying. It's mocking. It's tail-bearing. It's clear to you that that is what it is. Stop yourself from it. Protect your tongue from speaking about this. And the third one is, There's doubt. Is it good or is it bad? I'm not sure. It's not clear to me yet. Is it good or is it bad? I don't know. In this situation, Stop yourself from speaking. Because the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, what did he say? فَمَنِ اتَّقَ الشُّبُهَاتِ Anyone who stays away from the doubtful things, إِسْتَبَرَأَ لِدِينِهِ وَعِرْضِهِ He protects his religion and he protects his honor. As the Prophet also said in another hadith, دَعْ مَا يَرِيبُكَ إِلَى مَا لَا يَرِيبُكَ Leave off that which doubt, that you're doubtful about, and go to that which you don't have no doubt of. So brothers and sisters, that's the first foundation that is required from a person to protect his tongue. Allah Taala, He said to us in the Quran, Ya ayyuhalladheena amanu, those of you who believe, ittaqullaha fear Allah, be conscious of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, wa qulu qawlan sadeeda, say that which is good. Qawlan sadeeda, say good speech. وَلِذَلِكَ the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said to Mu'ad, when, the, when Mu'ad said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, O Messenger of Allah, are we going to be held account for the things that we say, the Messenger said, Thakilatka ummuka ya Mu'ad. Mu'ad, may your mother lose. May your, may your mother lose you. Wahal yakubu nasa fin nari ala wujuhim. Aw ala manakhirim illa hasaidu al sinatim. Is there any other reason why the people's face is going to go into the hellfire first, except that which their tongues have said? Wahal yakubu nasa. Hani, is there anything that uh, puts the people's faces ala wujuhim, in their faces first into hellfire? Except that which their tongues have brought forward. So the first foundation that Ibn Abi Zayd al-Qirawani brought is the hadith protecting your tongue. The second pillar is al-bu'du an al-fudul wa ma la ya'ni staying away from unnecessary stuff. That which doesn't concern you. Min husn al-islam al-mar tarku ma la ya'ni Leaving off that which doesn't concern you. What are your business? Why are you talking about it? Who had, who asked you to be discussing this issue? Who brought you into this discussion? No one. You're the one who is, is inside matters that don't concern you. It's none of your business. You make it your business. This goes against good manners. Walidarika, a person who's always into these issues. Al insanul fuduliyu. A person who's always into things which are none of his business. He can never have good manners and good etiquettes. He can't. Because pushing himself into things that don't concern him takes him out from the realm of good manners. Whereas the person who always gets himself into that which concerns him, he does what concerns him, you see from him that he has the etiquettes that attract uh, people to him. Many people are like that today. They have the concept of getting one that, in that which is a concern. There's also another misunderstanding that happens from some people when it comes to this hadith, min husn al-islam al ma la yani. What they do is, if you advise them on something they're wrong on, you say, Akhi, this, I think it's not right for you to do that. For example, you're sitting with someone and they drink with their left hand and you say, Habibi, I think you forgot, but maybe you would want to drink with your right hand. And then he says to you, 
Akhi, talk about what concerns you. This is none of your business. This person, we say to them, you have su'ul fahm. You've misunderstood the hadith. Because the religion of Islam told us that that is something that is concerning to us. It is our business. The evil that we see, that we should stop it. And we need to, we need to rejoice the good. Call to the good. Okay? So that's not what the hadith is talking about. It's someone who goes into other people's relationships, other people's bonds and friendship. And he gets into affairs that has nothing to do with you. Why are you placing yourself forward for this issue? The third pillar is لا تغضب. Don't get angry. Anger, brothers and sisters, is a very evil trait. وَلِذَلِكَ It was said about getting angry الغضب أوله جنون وآخره ندم Anger at the beginning it starts off crazy. When you see the person who's angry, the way he jumps, the way he gets angry, the way he throws things around, he says, it's Majnoon, man. It's crazy. And then later when he calms down, he's regretting everything he did. That's why the scholars, they say, The beginning of uh, anger is craziness. It's lunatic. And at the ending, the person is regretting it. Why did I do this? Why did I divorce my wife? I shouldn't have done this. Oh. Well, that's why the Prophet said, La Don't get angry. What does it mean, don't get angry? It means don't come into contact with something that's going to ignite anger. I mean, it's any means that's going to lead for you to get angry, whether it be speech, whether it be action, whether it be dealing with a particular person, stay away from it. Any means that's going to lead you to getting angry, avoid it. Stay away from it. Because what's going to happen? You're going to get angry. And then that anger is going to lead to what? Again, doing things that are inappropriate. And then later you're going to regret it. The person, when they're generally angry, uh, the person starts to do things at the times that you're angry. Uh, you don't have control over yourself. You don't know what you did. So there are two things that you should try to do, inshallah. Ta'ala. The first thing is if you're standing up, sit down. As the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, إِذَا غَضِبَ أَحَدُكُمْ وَهُوَ قَائِمٌ فَلْيَجْلِسِ If one of you is angry and he does something, the Prophet said, فَلْيَجْلِسِ Let him sit down. Sit down. فَإِنْ ذَهَبَ عَنْهُ الْغَضَبُ If the anger goes, alhamdulillah. If it doesn't go and you're still angry, فَلْيَضَّجِعِ Let him lie down. And he, you sat down, it didn't change anything, lie down, alayhi salatu wa sallam. Or else lie down. Also, what you should do is to, the second thing you should do is stop talking. Stop yourself from talking. Silence. Utter silence. Radio silence. Because the Messenger he said, If one of you is angry, be silent. Because it leads to that which is not good. Some of the riwayat that has come from the companions that they said. Some of the Salaf, of the Sahabas, they said, I looked into this hadith, I looked into this hadith of the evil traits of anger. He said, I looked at the anger. Pondered over it and contemplated on what anger does to someone. فوجدت, I realized أن الغضب جماع الشر. I came to the conclusion that anger is the, is the conclusion of evil. It is the summary of evil. The fourth pillar of akhlaq is سلامة الصدر. Clean your heart. Cleanse your heart from having things about Muslims. The Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said لا يؤمن أحدكم one of you is not a true believer. Until he loves for his brother what he loves for himself. Loving for your brother is what you love for yourself. The characteristics of a believer is Oh Allah, do not place in our heart enmity and grudge and a certain feeling towards our believing brothers. Salamatu sadr Cleaning your chest, cleaning your heart from all of that. Don't hold anything in your heart towards people. Just let it go. Leave it 
remove it from your heart, avoid it. There's a famous saying, don't let other people live in your hearts, in your mind without paying rent. Why are you concerned and confused and thinking about someone else? Let it go. Forgive and forget. Well, I, brothers and sisters, when we ponder over this ayah, and this ayah, it, the person who benefits from not having enmity in the hearts of the people is yourself. You're, you, the person, is going to enjoy yourself. And if you let go of this, you forget it. Sakina. But if you keep thinking about this person, okay, why? You're going to suffer. You're going to be on the uh, stress and depression and everything. Let go. Let it be. Well, many people have this trait grudge, bad feeling towards other people. And his heart is just dhagina. Well, Allah, he tells us in the Quran that this feeling that people have for each other in their hearts, just before they enter Jannah, they're going to be cleansed from that. You can't enter Jannah and this is still in your heart. That's why Allah says, وَنَزَعْنَا مَا فِي صُدُورِهِمْ مِنْ غِلِّ الْإِخْوَانِ عَلَىٰ سُرُورِ الْمُتَقَابِلِينَ Allah says, we remove from their hearts the ghil, the enmity or the certain feeling or the grudge that they may have for one another. It cleansed. The qandara. Everything's cleansed. Everybody goes their way, having nothing towards each other. And what's in the hearts towards others, it generally reflects on your limbs. If you've got feeling in your heart towards the people, your, your manners towards them is going to be very bad. That's why this hadith is very important. It doesn't be, just become a feeling. It becomes actions. You start becoming rude. You're dismissive. You don't want to hear them. Well, that's why the hadith says, أَلَا وَإِنَّ فِي الْجَسَدِ مُضْغَ إِذَا صَلَحَتْ صَلَحَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّ وَإِذَا فَسَدَتْ فَسَدَ الْجَسَدُ كُلُّ أَلَا وَهِيَ الْقَلْبِ That this organ in your heart, which is the one that can carry the hate and the enmity, if it gets corrupted, your manners all get lost. You can't keep your composure. You start becoming vulgar, angry, f- rude, dismissive, and belittling, mocking. Because you have a certain, it's all because of the ghil that you have in your heart, and the hasid that you have in your heart, or something, there's something there. You clean that, the reaction goes. We have to strive, brothers and sisters. We have to work very hard in coming with those four that I mentioned, those four pillars. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He told us in the Quran, وَالَّذِينَ جَاهَدُوا فِينَا لَنَهْدِيَنَّهُمْ سُبُولَنَا وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ عَلَى مَعَ الْمُحْسِنِينَ Anyone who strives, who exerts the efforts, Allah tabarak wa ta'ala, He said, we guide them to it. If we strive hard, you know, trying to attain those four, Allah will give it to us, subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَإِنَّ اللَّهَ لَمْ عَلْمُ حُسِنِينَ Allah is with those who are noble and great. Subhanahu wa ta'ala. وَلِذَلِكَ the Messenger صلى الله عليه وسلم He said in the hadith, Imam al-Tabarani narrated in his awsab, وَحَسَّنَهُ الْأَلْبَانِيُ فِي صَحِيحِ الْجَامِعِ That the Prophet said, إِنَّمَا الْعِلْمُ بِالتَّحَلُّمِ Knowledge is attained by exerting the efforts. وَإِنَّمَا الْحِلْمُ بِالتَّحَلُّمِ And forbearance is attained by working on it, by trying to gain it. The Prophet then said, مَنْ يَتَحَرَّ الْخَيْرَ يُعْطَهُ Anyone who strives to good will be given to him. وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ الشَّرَّ يُوْقَهُ And anyone who stays and, and, and avoids evil, he will be protected from it. So we have to strive to it, brothers and sisters. We also have to ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help and aid and support. That is why the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa said to Mu'ad, Ya Mu'ad, wallahi inni la uhibbuk. Mu'ad, wallahi I love you. And then Mu'ad said to the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Bi abi anta wa ummi. You, I, free, I would free my mother and father for your messenger of Allah. Wallahi inni la uhibbuk. I also love you. And then the messenger said, Usika ya Mu'ad, Mu'ad I advise you. La tada'anna fi duburi kulli salah. Do not leave off after every prayer to say, Allahumma a'inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husn ibadatik. Oh Allah, aid me and support me in your remembrance, in showing gratitude to you, wa husn ibadatik, and perfecting the acts of worship. Also, it came from the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that he said, Atuhibbuna ayyuha nasu an tajtahidu fi du'a'i. The Messenger said to the companions in general, do you guys love to strive in doing dua? قَالُوا نَعَمْ يَا رَسُولَ اللَّهِ The Sahaba said, of course, O Messenger of Allah. The Messenger then said, say, قُولُوا اللَّهُمَّ عِنَّا عَلَى ذِكْرِكَ وَشُكْرِكَ وَحُسْنِ عِبَادَتِكَ 
The second hadith shows us that you can say this dua generally. It's not just fi adbar salawat at the ending of the prayers, but actually it is a what? It's a dua, it's a da'wa mutlaqa. Yu'ta biha fi kulli waqtim. You can come with it every time by saying, Allahumma a'inni ala dhikrika wa shukrika wa husni ibadatik. That you ask Allah to aid you. A'inni, help me. So make dua that Allah gives you good manners. Inshallah ta'ala, I'm going to conclude. Inshallah ta'ala, how are we able to come with good manners? I'm going to mention five ways that we can strive, we can exact the effort by coming with good manners. Five stations, five points, inshallah ta'ala. That five points is how do we implement the ayah? How can we strive to come with good manners? Mujahada. Inshallah ta'ala, there are five inshallah ta'ala ways that we can. The first one inshallah ta'ala is perfecting our intention. The intention is very important. If you want to come with good manners, first of all, cleanse your intention. Why are you doing it? Clean yourself from inside. Walidhalika Sufyan al-Tawri rahimahullah, he said, Ma alajtu shay'an ashadda alayya min niyati. إِنَّهَا تَقَلَّبُ عَلَيَّ إِنَّهَا تَقَلَّبُ عَلَيَّ I have never strived to something greater than my intentions. For verily, it turns and it tosses itself on me. The se second is strive عَلَى تَعَلُّمِ هَذِهِ الْأَخْلَاقِ وَالْأَدَابِ By studying and learning the good manners that Islam mentioned. By those books that talk about good manners. By the Kitab Jami'u Bayan al-Ilmi wa Fadli by Ibn Abdul Bar. By the Kitab Jami'u Al-Akhlaq al-Rawi wa Adabi al-Sabi'a by Khatib al-Baghdadi. By the Kitab Tadkirat al-Sabi'a by Ibn Jama'a al-Kinani wa Rahimahullah. By the Kitab Manzumatu al-Ta'iyya by Abiz Haqq al-Ibiri. By the Kitab Husn al-Khuluq by Abd al-Rahman Nasr al-Sa'li. By the Kitab Adab by Ibn Abd al-Qawi al-Mardawi wa Rahimahullah. Yani by all those books. By the Kitab Al-Adab written by Ibn Muflih, rahimahullah, yani buy all of those books and read them. Also the Kitab Makarim al-Akhlaq by Ibn Abi Dunya, yani all of those books on manners, buy those books and read them, study it, learn it. Even the books of Hadith, Bukhari, and Muslim, they mention chapter of manners, read it. Kutub al-Aqidah, at the ending they mention issues related to manners, read it. How is this how important it is? The third one is, try to apply it in your life. Strive to take those ahadiths, those ayat, and try to apply it into your life. Mujahadatu ala tatbiqi hadhi al-adab wa tahalli bi hadhi al-akhlaq. Adorn yourself with it. Beautify yourself with it. As the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, man jada nafsahu fi ta'ati Allah. That the one who strives his self in the obedience of Allah. The fourth one is calling the people to it. Clarifying it for the people. That's a... It's also a way of upholding good manners, calling to it, propagating it. That's why Allah Taala said in the Quran, "وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ وَعَمِلَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ." The ayah, "وَمَنْ أَحْسَنُهُ is greater than a person." مِمَّنْ دَعَى إِلَى اللَّهِ the one who's better speech than a person who calls to Allah. وَعَمِلَ الصَّالِحَ and he does good actions. Had good manners, good aqeedah, good in accordance with the sunnah. وَقَالَ and then he says, إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ I'm from the Muslims. I'm a person who's from the Muslims. Number five is striving. Number five, it is striving by asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for help and aid. فَإِنَّ مَنِ اسْتَعَانَ اللَّهِ Wallahi fa inna man istaana billahi Anyone who asks Allah for help A'anahu Allah Allah is going to help you Subhanahu wa ta'ala Wa man tawakkala alayhi kafah And anyone who relies on Allah Tabarak wa ta'ala Allah will suffice you That's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said in the hadith Ihris ala ma'ayam fa'uk Strive to that which will benefit you Wasta'in billah And ask Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala for help and aid Wa la ta'jaz and do not give up Those three are very important in good manners Strive to that which will benefit you by coming with good manners. Ask Allah for help. And the third one is, وَلَا تَعْجَزْ and do not give up. 
ان شاء الله تعالى in our next episode باذن الله الكريم باذن الله الكريم i'm going to go into the first manners that in shallah ta'ala that i want us to all adorn ourselves with anything which i have said that was wrong or incorrect is from me and shaytan and allah and his messenger are free from it subhanak allahumma wa bihamdik ashhadu an la ilaha illallah astaghfiruka wa atubu ilaik assalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh how can you do a two second action right now that will give you a share of the reward of everything we're doing on this youtube channel simple like this video and click subscribe why it will allow youtube to recommend our videos to other users and imagine the huge amount of reward that could be waiting for you on the day of judgment if you did that with a sincere intention of spreading the deen of allah you'll be rewarded for every single person who benefits from one of our videos as a result of your like or subscribe as an easy two second action that you definitely don't want to miss out on do it now click like and subscribe and don't forget to make that intention